We have with us uh, the coach of the senior men's national team, Mr. Stephen Constantine. Thanks, sir, for taking the time to join us this afternoon. It's a pleasure. Uh, the idea of having this conversation was to, without editorializing, just have a free-flowing sort of conversation okay. with you about where the national team is at and, and how you're uh, preparing for what's likely to be the biggest tournament for the national team. Mm. Uh, so, just to get straight into it, how, how are things developing and how, how have you seen the team grow over the past four years? Wow, um, well, I think it's been an amazing uh, journey so far. Obviously, uh, the cherry on the cake will be the, the, the Asian Cup, but um, it, it's been um, very difficult. Obviously, it took us uh, almost three years to qualify for the Asian Cup, and, and I think this is the first time we've ever done it um, this way. Um, I am extremely proud of the players and, and, and the work that everybody at the Federation has done. I mean, it's, um, it's a completely uh, team effort. Uh, the goal scorers usually get the glory and the coach usually gets the glory, but you've got to look at the, the girl who does the logistics, books the flights and the, all of that, and the, the groundsmen and the, the, the guys who do the kit. There's so many people involved. It's, um, it's just a massive uh, operation and um, very proud to be um, uh, the head coach. Um, something that you talked about in at length in your book as well. Mm. Uh, league structures in India, how how the club system sort of feeds into the national team and yeah. therefore the results of the national team. Uh, compared to your first stint as national team coach, how have you seen the club structure in India develop and uh, in terms of robustness, in, in terms of coaching standards? Okay, I, I think obviously uh, the, the level of coaching is, is, is higher because you have more, uh, more foreign coaches are here and, and, and um, some of them are very good uh, uh, level, have coached at, at the top level. So uh, I think that's there, but um, we, we need to be doing a lot more further down. You see the head coach of uh, Adeli Dynamos or the head coach of the national team for me, he's not the most important person. The most important person is the grassroots coach and the youth development coach because they're the ones who are building the uh, foundation for the future. Um, the difference between 2002, 2005 to 2015 and, and, and 19 is um, the ISL has put Indian football on the map. It, it's, uh, everybody in the world knows that uh, we have an Indian Super League. Um, and that's fine but you've got to go a little bit further underneath the top layer and think oh well, what's happening underneath um, we will be in the same situation in five years time if we are not developing our coaches and our younger players um, and, and th that is uh, the thing that has not happened um, in in the 10 years we have not developed uh, good quality Indian coaches, uh, we have some, but, but not enough. Uh, and therefore, if you don't have the quality Indian coaches, how are you going to get the quality Indian players? So, when you look at some of the players uh, uh, now, um, in, in many cases, they don't know the foundation uh, of the game because nobody's shown them. Uh, and, and where's my... Uh, my proof of that, we don't have a single player playing outside of the Indian leagues. Uh, and, and, and that's because the level of the, most of the other leagues, uh, say, should we say European leagues, uh, is, is far higher than the level that we have at the moment. And, and that goes for the same for the Chinas, the Japans, the South Koreas, the UAE, Saudis, Uzbekistan. The, the, those leagues are, are so much ahead because they spent the time building the foundation. The foundation is grassroots. The foundation is good quality Indian coaches, not quantity. We have quantity in everything we do here, but we need to focus on the quality. And I think um, that's beginning to happen. But like I said, um, I, I left India in 2005 and I, I said these things and uh, disappointed coming back and similar yeah. so just uh, sticking with this uh, chain of thought for a minute longer um, in your opinion we're trying to create this elite level competition at the very top like like you mentioned do you think 
it would be more beneficial to have a more inclusive league structure with more clubs so that one of the things that we're lacking in terms of quantity is competitive fixtures even for elite level footballers in India. They're only paying 20, 25, sometimes maybe a few yeah. more games. Look, we definitely need a bigger league. We definitely need more games and we definitely need less foreigners so that the Indian boy has the opportunity. We were recently asked, was asked a question about that. So an Indian player is thinking, if I want to play football, don't go as a striker because I'm not going to get. In most clubs, you've got two foreigners or one foreigner as a striker, so that leaves spot for an Indian. So he'll play in midfield or he'll play right back. And you see now what's happening in, in the league. We've got Indian players playing out of position to accommodate the foreigner when it should be the other way around. We should be playing Indian players in the positions that they play and get a foreigner in to supplement or complement where the Indian pair, not the other way around. But when the league started, there were seven foreigners, I believe. Mm -hmm. Now it's six, uh, now it's five, and hopefully next year it's four, and if it was me, I would make it two maybe. But that's me. Mm -hmm. So are we suffering in a way from like, on the one hand, there's a push to make the sport more popular, broad-based, which, which has happened, friendly audience, which is happening, of course, yeah. through social media yeah. and things like yeah. that. Uh, but on the flip side, there's there's this little conundrum. Yeah, look. Um, so, is it, is, in a sense, what you were talking about earlier as well, short-term versus long-term. Nothing can happen overnight. In such no, a but but there needs to be somewhere to go. So the other, the other version is you have all these academies, uh, you're producing players, but there's nowhere for them to play. There needs to be a pathway. You have the pathway. I-League, ISL, it's, it's there. It's, that's our level. Uh, what we need now is to uh, really go down and develop the coaches so that they will develop the players. Uh, and we need a proper plan and we need uh, a, a, a a vision for this to happen. Is it happening? Yes. Is it happening enough? For me, no. For me, no. Not enough. Um, and that needs to be decided by the powers that be. I mean, it's not something I can... Do on your own. No, yeah. I've tried. <laughs> We've spoken about this before, about mm. the need to have sort of a cohesive uh, way, Indian way in which teams play from... We've got to play our, 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 our to style our of play. We can't, you know, I'd look, it really does my head in when you have foreign coaches come over here and oh we're going to play the way we play where we are yeah but guess what you're not where you are you're in India we have our culture here we have our way of life and how we do things is it perfect no but it's ours and so you have to come in uh, with your ideas and your experience which is why they're bringing uh, the foreigner in and, and he has to uh, uh, take the best out of what's in the country and make it better. And that's what I try to do. Mm -hmm. At a personal level for you, this is a major tournament as well. And how yeah. excited are you to, to be taking, leading the team? Well, um, obviously being the national coach for me is a huge honor. Um, being the, uh, the coach to lead India in the Asian Cup is again, you know, it's massive. It's massive for me. I'm very proud. Um, and as I said before, I, I have a lot of people to thank to be in this position. And my my boss, Mr. Patel and Mr. Das uh, have, have stuck with me because, uh, you know, when I first came, uh, there were some dark days and I told them, you know, the way we are right now, we're going to have to go through some very dark times. Trust me and I will get us there. And Thanks to the efforts of everybody, I, I, we have managed to do that. I don't, you don't like to speak about individual players, mm. but, but that said... But you're going to make me. Well, <laughs> you're going to try and make me. <laughs> uh, you've given a lot of players a chance to represent the national team, mm. a lot of young players yeah. particularly. Yeah. Boys like uh, Anirudh Thapa, for example, mm. have, he, he had a phenomenal game against China. Yeah. Uh, he's developing into that midfield sort of dynamo role that, that is so important in holding a team together. Absolutely. Uh, how positive is this as a sign that there are young Indian players who want to have the ball, want to be involved both defensively, in transition, going forward, overall? Uh, look, the ability 
is here okay we have talent all over the place you look at some of the other players in in the indian national team when we found them they didn't even have clubs okay so it's just a question of us looking and again i go back to them being taught the right things at the right time uh, the younger the younger you can get them uh, the more you can teach them um, the less set in their ways they are but when you're working with a 24 25 year old a 28 year old you know he's been doing that that's got him this far um, and it's difficult for them to change but look if if an Indian player gets the same information as an English player or a Spanish player what is the difference but the difference is is that the English boy and the Spanish boy are getting it from the age of nine ten and the Indian boy isn't mm. and that's where we, we, we have the deficiency it's it's um, uh, something that we need to fix are you looking forward to selection headaches? Balwan, for example, cracking one in from uh, long range yeah, and look, giving it, something it, more to think it, about? It's always good when you, when, when you have choice. A choice breeds competition. Competition breeds uh, choice. And, you know, it's, um, you want to have three or four strikers to choose from. And uh, th th that's... Um, people, people need to be looking over their shoulder. They need to be under pressure. They need to know that, look, if I don't do this play... Uh, well, maybe I'm going to get dropped. You know, one of, the, one of the things I say to the players before they go out, you asked me the motivation, I will tell you, I say to them, most often, play today like it's the last time you're ever going to play for India. Because maybe it is. So, if you think about that, um, this today is the last time you're going to play. Give everything you have. And for four years, they have. And I expect them to do it. To continue. To continue, yeah. Uh, last question, I guess, to wind up. Uh, how important is it for these young players, these developing players, to go, go to a major competition, to feel sort of that, uh, to, to experience that, and to play against competition that is. It's once in a lifetime. For us in India, it's once in a lifetime. Um, you cannot buy this. The boys that will go, they'll be telling their grandchildren in, in, in 30 years time that I was there. And, and I think um, it's, a, it's a big deal. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big deal. Um, the ones who won't be there, um, it's going to be bad luck. Well, I, I can tell you there's going to be some people, uh, very unhappy boys, mm -hmm. um, uh, who, who have been part of this setup and um, they have all contributed one way or another but at the end of the day i can only take 23 so um so uh, i'm gonna have some problems all the best thanks, thanks very so much, much.